This is part three of chapter 41, Economic Influences. And in this video, we'll talk about taxation, government spending, and the business cycle. So uh, let's talk about taxation. There are two different types of taxes, direct taxes and indirect taxes. Direct taxes are taxes on income and indirect taxes are taxes on spending. Uh, an example of a direct tax would be income tax. An example of an indirect tax would be VAT. Now let's get on to some of the effects of changes in the in the ta in taxation on business so changes in certain types of tax taxation are likely to increase the income consumers have left after tax and uh, these reductions in income tax uh, will lead to higher disposable income which would lead to higher level of consumer spend spending so um if if the if the income tax was to increase then that would lead to uh, lower consumer spending because the amount of disposable income that consumers have got left will be lower um and increase in vat or excise duty will raise the costs of a business and that will uh, that will lead to higher prices of goods and services because often biz what businesses do is that they often pass on this v this extra cost of VAT to customers or consumers by raising the price of their goods and services. So that will affect prices. Um, of course, obviously, if the there's an increase in taxation, corporation tax or the VAT or whatever tax, it will affect business costs, uh, business costs, revenue and profits. Your cost will increase, which will lead to a lower profit. Your revenue might reduce, it might be lower. Uh, that's simply because when when you have more taxes, when businesses have more taxes that they have to pay, they usually try to increase the price of their goods and services that they sell to maintain profit. However, sometimes that ends up um, being not the not the very not a very good thing because that leads to. Uh, low levels of revenue which ultimately leads to lower profits so that's also uh, an effect on businesses of changes in taxation um, increases in costs and reduced profits mean that businesses have less retained profit now this can affect the uh, ability of a business to invest uh, so that will affect investment shares there is a type of indirect tax called capital <coughs> sorry not indirect uh, there's a type of direct tax called capital gains tax which will affect shares and sales of shares so shareholders might be deterred from selling their shares because of this tax um importing and ex exporting uh, also there's a tax customs duties which uh, have to be paid so of course uh, increases in custom duties can affect businesses an example could be uk raised customs duties on imported products and a uk business might benefit because imports against uh, which it competes would have would have would then have a higher price so um uh so you see how it is uh let me put it in a simple look. so if you impose a ta if a government imposes a tax on imports and exports um that's that's simply helping the 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 domestic economy so the 
UK business itself so that the imports are higher and then it's actually cheaper to buy it in in, in your own con in in your own country rather than import it from abroad you know uh next we have business operations and employees increases in the national insurance contributions of employers uh might deter employers from recruiting extra workers um there are other effects you know certain types of business uh, might be affected by changes in tax uh, an increase in landfill tax might encourage businesses to recycle uh, sugar tax is also a great example uh, tax avoidance and evasion increases in taxation um, often lead to businesses uh, try, try to avoid paying tax they might not hire work hire workers to avoid higher national insurance contributions they might um what else could they do um you know they might switch from buying imports to avoid customs duties for example um so you know again they might not import so it's to reduce importing customs duties is a tax used for that um so that's that's all the effects of changes in taxation now uh let's talk a little bit about the effect of changes in government expenditure so if we go on to uh government expenditure yeah so uh just just <coughs> sorry excuse me okay so um government expenditure can influence business activity um in a number of ways so um if the government for example if the government increases spending to uh, more than it raises in taxes, total spending in the economy will rise. Now, um, the so many businesses may benefit from higher spending levels in the economy. Um, however, too much government spending, government expenditure, can lead to other problems such as um, inflation or interest higher interest rates in other words uh government spending uh on infrastructure infrastructure can lead to economic growth and that may benefit businesses however it can also lead to other problems such as inflation um, and higher interest rates okay so um an example um uk government has tried to cut spending in some departments to reduce borrowing um you know and um so uh the amount of debt interest paid by government is planned to be 53 billion now that's a huge amount of money and could be used for other departments such as healthcare or education if the government debt was eliminated so the government has tried to reduce this annual deficit uh, uh, the government has made a vast amount of cuts in expenditure and uh, that has led to a drop in disposable income for many which has affected businesses badly uh, obviously 
So you have to be really, really careful uh, when dealing with the effect of changes in government expenditure because it's not always clear. So when the government does cut its spending, it's always, it leads to problems. But if the government does too much spending, then it also leads to problems such as inflation and higher interest rates. So um, it can affect businesses in a number of ways, both positive, positively and negatively. What I'd keep in mind is uh, whenever you talk about government spending in an exam question or, or a case study, when you try to look at it from that perspective, try to link it to the business and find, try to get, understand the con- context of what it, what the case study is telling you. It might not even it might not be relevant. Uh, however, because if it's in if it's a UK business, then it will be relevant because the government does intervene quite a lot, and uh, in the in the UK economy, so UK businesses, and you know if it's an international business, then you know, the effect of the changes in government uh, expenditure, we don't know how it will affect. And you have to make sure, um, you know, how much of the revenue and income earned by that business is coming, is actually coming from the UK. So it, uh, it depends on a number of things, but I'd keep in mind that there is a positive side which is leading to economic growth and having consumers having higher disposable income and then that leading to good business however there is a downside when you cut government expenditures cuts in government expenditure can lead to um, lower disposable income because they may cut uh, pay for people in the public sector and that might lead to uh, some negative effects for businesses Uh, that might lead to lower consumption and negative effects Uh, yeah basically just bad for business in other words Uh, so uh, a final one that I want to mention is the business cycle. Uh, okay, so if I talk about the business cycle, and let me see if I can put up a picture. It will be so much easier to talk about and discuss with the with the picture okay excuse me okay uh so this is a typical business cycle diagram and uh this is what it looks like kind of like going up and down and up and down um so over uh, just imagine that uh, a business cycle is a diagram that represents the level of um, output in an economy so it could be uh, you can call it the uh, you know the economic cycle as well because it represents the uh, the economy overall but in business in a level business you'd call it the business cycle but it, it can also be called the economic cycle it can also be called a uh, trade cycle so um yeah so i'm trying to find the simplest way that I could describe this uh, so just imagine um 
looking at a diagram which shows the cyclical nature of the economy. So you have the growth, you have the beginning, and then you have the peak growth, and then you have the the negative economic growth, and then it goes up again, and then comes down, and then recovery, and and so on, so on. So um, so just uh, try to imagine the fluctuations in the economy. Uh, the fluct the business cycle is mainly fluctuations in the economy or changes in the economy or changes in GDP. You could even say that changes in GDP. So um, over a period of time, gross domestic product, uh, GDP, which is uh, output in the economy, is expected to grow. Um, however, however, the rate of growth is not exactly smooth as you can see and there are these fluctuations and in in a definition def definitive sense those fluctuations are known as the business cycle um so the first one the uh, biggest one that we need to know about is a boom uh which is this part right here the peak now this peak of the cycle is called a boom and during a boom GDP which is gross domestic product is growing fast because the economy is performing really really well now existing firms at this point at this point right here now, the existing firms at this point will be expanding new firms will be entering the markets at peak and uh, wages will be rising profits made by firms will be rising everything will be very good everything will be amazing and it's a good part of the cycle <laughs> however uh, a boom will then be followed by a downturn so this right here it will s so this this was the boom and it's it will be it's followed by a downturn now what what's a downturn so um the economy is still growing but at a slower rate so as you can see that it was at peak here but it's still growing but at a slower rate so th this is the green arrow is the growth trend still growing but at a slower rate that is called that is what is known as a downturn the economy is growing but at a slower rate okay um so demand for goods uh, for goods and services will flatten out or begin to fall um so again a downturn demand for goods and services will fall will begin to fall and it will flatten out unemployment will start to rise and you know wages will uh, will start to come down and it will be slow a slowdown um until we reach this part here you see this little part and that is what you call a recession so this this recession this part is mostly recession from all the way from here to here and so this recession is at the bottom of the business cycle GDP is at its lowest so may also be referred to as a slump or depression and um, demand will start to fall um, unemployment will rise sharply and uh, business confidence is very low bankruptcies rise prices become flat so it's a tough time for the economy a recession uh, but soon after soon after we see something called the recovery and the recovery is what you call 
uh, is followed after the recession is what you call a little bit of rise in the GDP again. So it's like a cycle. Here it was at peak and then it slowed down a little bit and then it went all the way down, slump, depression. And then now, again, we're talking about GDP, which is also output in the economy. Now it's starting to rise, but slowly. It's starting to rise slowly. And, you know, and this this upswing or recovery in the economy will soon go all the way up into expansion and will turn into growth in in time and then the cycle will continue so that's why it's cyclical in nature it's called a business it's called the business cycle and at different points at on the cycle on the cycle the business the business uh, will be affected in a completely different ways so the the impact of business cycle and business then so uh your output first of all the biggest one is the impact on output so during a boom businesses tend to increase output to meet the rising demand and so compared to a boom in recession obviously the output will be much lower and there will be no demand especially for essential items and so on and so on and profits will be lower in recession in fact no profits more bankruptcies and so on and lower business confidence and no or low investment and employment is another big uh thing during a boom and a recession so if you compare the boom the employment is rising the wages are rising everyone's happy businesses are happy they're hiring more people there's growth there's demand whereas in recession the unemployment rates are rising and there's no investment there's no business confidence no one's happy no one's confident the consumers aren't spending the output isn't as high as it's supposed to be um so the whole economy the whole uh cycle is disrupted so to speak and it slowly it starts to rise slowly normally with the government intervention and the increases in government expenditure um you know often with the monetary policies and a number of uh policies by introduced by the government which help the business cycle or the economic cycle uh recover or it generally recovers on its own as well um but so that's so that's that's that that's the business cycle um i hope this was kind of clear and uh that it sort of made sense but the best thing the the most important thing i guess to remember with the business cycle is that it's all about the output and the gdp and the fluctuations in the gdp or output in an economy so every time even if there's a definition that you have to give in an exam all you need to do is you need to say that fluctuations in the output or fluctuations in the gdp is what you call is known as the business cycle or the economic cycle or the trade cycle whatever um okay so that's that and that's the end of yeah that's let me yeah that's yeah i don't think we have yeah that's that's the end of chapter 41 economic influences on business a level business chapter 41 and that's the last topic